Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I have another knitting tutorial for you. So as Christmas approaches, I thought it'd be fun to do a quick and easy Christmas ornament that you can knit. And this looks adorable both hanging on the tree and also as a cute little present topper. So tie it in with some ribbon and it looks adorable because you can knit it in so many different colors. So what I'm gonna be taking you through today is first up all the materials I used, then I'm gonna go step by step through how I knit, how I knit <laughs> this mini mitten. And we start with the cast off down at the bottom. We join in the round. I do knit using magic loop in the round. We're gonna work up through to a little bit of color work in here, just to add a little bit of fun extra detail. Work the thumb increases, place the thumb stitches on waist yarn, work up through the rest of the mitten, decrease cast off, then come back over here for the thumb. Then lastly, as a nice fun little option, I also added in a crocheted eye cord here at the end or the beginning. <laughs> that way it looks really clean and you can hang it from that. So those are all the steps I'm gonna take you through. I'll also have the full written version of the pattern linked in the description box down below. And then I'll also have each one of the video breakpoints that way you can fast forward or rewind any specific part of the video that you're looking for. So make sure you subscribe to my channel, that way you stay up to date on all my future videos. So hit that red button down below and let's get started. First up in terms of the materials you're gonna need is some worsted weight or number four yarn. So to knit these three right here, I was using Red Heart Super Saver and this one is in cherry red. And then this one I don't have a label on anymore, but I'm pretty sure it was the Joann's, um, I forget what it's called, it's like the value yarn. I'll leave it linked in the description box down below if you're curious about it. You're also gonna need a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. Start with the knitting needle. One knitting needle, and it does have to be some sort of circular knitting needle. So I, again, knit using Magic Loop. And this one is a size US 8. So you just wanna use something similar to whatever the yarn recommends. This yarn recommends a US 8, so that's what I'm going with. You can also go up or down one size if you like, cause these aren't actually gonna be worn. So the gauge isn't quite as important. Then lastly, if you're choosing to do the little cord to hang it from, you're gonna need a crochet hook that's similar in size to your knitting needle. So here I have a crochet hook that is the H size or the five millimeter. I'm gonna make this mitten here during this video. So it's gonna be white is my main color and then the red is the accent color here. So starting off with my white yarn, I'm gonna use any cast on method I'd like. So I'm gonna end up using the backward loop cast on to cast on a total of 20 stitches. Now when I cast on, I actually like to leave a whole bunch of extra yarn at the beginning. So probably almost about three feet there. I always like to leave a little bit more than I need to. And the reason I'm gonna leave that extra yarn there is that I don't have to join anything extra. I can use that yarn tail from the cast on to create the little hook to hang it from. So I have a nice long tail, and now I'm gonna work the 20 stitch cast on. Now that I have my 20 stitches cast on, I'm gonna join them in the round. And as I mentioned, I use magic loop. So to join them in the round, I slide them over to the cord. And now I count into the center point. So 10 stitches from either side. Once I find that center location, I stretch out the stitches, grab onto the cord there. And now I fold the cord in half and I slide each half of those stitches up to one of the knitting needle points. So you should end up with half your stitches on one knitting needle, half on the other. And when you get ready here, you want your working yarn to be coming out the knitting needle that's further away from you when you have your knitting needle points going over towards the right. So right now mine are actually backwards, so I'm gonna flip them. Let me double check, yep. So my working yarn is coming out my back knitting needle and I wanna make sure all of those cast on bumps are going down towards the table. Now the last thing I'm gonna do here before I actually begin working the first round is place my yarn so I don't actually end up with a yarn over by accident for the first stitch. So my first stitch on the front knitting needle is a knit stitch. So I'm gonna take my working yarn, 
go up in between my two knitting needles, then just drape it over my back knitting needle. That'll prevent me from ending up with a yarn over. Now to actually work the first round, I'm gonna take my back knitting needle, or the one furthest away from me, pull it towards the right, so those back stitches end up on the cord. And you'll notice there's still plenty of loop over here on the left-hand side. And now I'm gonna work across this first row, or first half of the stitches for this first row, in that knit one, purl one ribbing. So I'm gonna take my working yarn, knit the first stitch, and you do wanna pull that first stitch fairly tight so that they close up that gap in between the two knitting needles. Yarn front, purl one. And I'm gonna keep on working knit one, purl one, all the way across this front knitting needle. Now when I finish, there'll be no more stitches over here on my second knitting needle. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my work and I'm gonna flip it. So now the knitting needle is again pointing over towards the right. And I'm gonna thread back in my second knitting needle point. Now again, you wanna make sure your working yarn is coming out the back knitting needle or the one furthest away from you. All of your work is coming out down towards the table. And now again, the first stitch I'm gonna work on the second half of my stitches is a knit stitch. So I'm gonna take my working yarn, come up in between my knitting needles, drape it over my back knitting needle, and to begin working across the second half of the stitches, I'm gonna take my back knitting needle, pull it towards the right, and now begin working that knit one, purl one, all the way across. Curling that final stitch. And again, there's no stitches left on my other knitting needle. Now I'm all set up again to work the next half of the stitches in magic loop. But what I've actually done so far is I've worked across the first half of the stitches, then I turned my work and I went up, worked across the second half of the stitches. So by working across both knitting needles, that made up one full round. Now the pattern says to knit three full rounds of ribbing. So again, for the next round, I'm gonna work ribbing across the front, work ribbing across the back, then lastly, ribbing across the front, ribbing across the back. Once I finish those steps, I'll come back and I'll show you the next thing, which is where we start placing in the little bit of color work on these mittens. Now that I've finished the ribbing, I'm ready to add in the color work section. So first, before I actually join the next color of my yarn, I'm just gonna knit one full round. So for Magic Loop, I'm gonna knit across the front, turn my work, and knit across the back. Now that I'm back at the beginning of my round, I'm ready for adding in the next color. So I'm gonna be using red. In this color work section, it's a four stitch repeat. So on this first round, we're just working white, red, white, red, white, red, or color one, color two, color one, color two, all the way around both knitting needles. So first up, I'm gonna knit one stitch in white. Then I'm gonna join my red yarn. So the way I join my red yarn is I'm gonna take about eight inches or so, and I'm gonna thread it to the inside of my work. Now I just drape it over the back, and now I'm gonna go into knit that second stitch on my knitting needle and I'm gonna wrap the red yarn around now instead, knit that stitch. Next up, I need to work the white yarn. So I'm gonna switch back over to the white yarn. Then I need the red. So I'm gonna keep on going back and forth all the way across the round. In this case, I'm not too worried about which yarn stays on top or on the bottom as I am typically with color work because no one actually has to wear the mitten or anything like that. So it's not too important or high stakes here. Now when I turn my work, I'm just gonna make sure I continue the pattern. So I just finished with a red. So next up, I'm gonna have a white. And turn my work again. 
So now in the next round, the way the repeat works is we're gonna knit two in color one, which is my white yarn. So I'm gonna knit two in white, one in red, then the last one in white. So what this is gonna end up looking like is on top of each set of two red stitches, you should have one red one just centered right above it, is what it should look like as you're going across the round. So again, I'm gonna work two in my original color, which for me is white. Then one in red. And for this first one crossing between the two knitting needles, you just wanna make sure you leave a loose piece of yarn there. Don't pull it too tight. Then knit one in white. Start that repeat over again. So I'm gonna knit two in white. And again, for this inner corner, because I am pulling the red from pretty far away, I'm just gonna make sure I don't pull that red strand too tight at all. I leave it nice and loose. That way I don't end up with you being able to tell that I pulled it across when I look at the outside of my work. So I'm just gonna leave it nice and loose. Sometimes I push my index finger on that piece of yarn just to give it even a little bit extra. So now that I finished that second round, I'm gonna turn my work again. And now I can cut that red yarn or contrast color yarn. And again, I'm just gonna leave about eight inches or so here. So I can weave it in and I am all done with that second colorway. So to keep that red yarn out of the way, again, I'm gonna tuck that yarn tail that I have to the inside of my work. And there's the fun little detail. Now next up, we're actually gonna begin our thumb increases immediately here. So the way the thumb increases are worked is it's worked as a knit front, knit back. So what a knit front, knit back does is it turns one stitch into two stitches. So on this first stitch on the round following the color work, I'm gonna take my right knitting needle, go into the first stitch knit wise, wrap my yarn around, pull the yarn through. So I just worked it as if I knit it, but I left it on this left knitting needle. Now I'm gonna go into that same stitch again, but I'm gonna go into the back of the stitch. So I'm gonna take my right knitting needle into the back base, going from right to left, wrap my yarn around, and now pull that loop through and slide the stitch off my left knitting needle. So that was a knit front, knit back, where we turn the one stitch into two. So to show it one more time. First, I'm gonna knit into the front of the stitch. So as I normally would knit it, leaving the stitch on my left knitting needle. Now I'm gonna go into the back of the same stitch, wrap my yarn back behind, then towards the front, pull the loop through, and now slide it off. Now I'm gonna continue knitting the rest of the round. That was only the first half, so I'm gonna turn my work and knit all the way across the back. Now for the next thumb round, I'm gonna work a knit front knit back on the first stitch and to knit front knit back on the second stitch. So I'm turning the first stitch into two, the second stitch into two. So we're gonna have a total of four thumb stitches when we're finished here. So knit front, leave it on, knit back, slide it off, knit front, leave it on, knit back, slide it off. And again, I'm gonna knit all the way across the rest of the round to the front and the back knitting needle. And now I'm gonna knit one full round. So no increases this round.
So I'm just going to describe the final rounds here for knitting the thumb because it does begin to get a little repetitive based off of what I just showed. But again, all these rows will be written out in the description box down below. So for this next thumb increase, we're going knit to knit front knit back into the first stitch, knit two, then knit front knit back into the fourth stitch, knit across the rest of the round, then knit one full round. So then we should have six stitches for our thumb. Then once we've done that, we're going to knit front knit back into the first stitch, knit four, knit front knit back into the last stitch there, then knit across the rest of the round, knit one more round. So by the end of that one, you'll have a total of eight stitches for your thumb. So once I get up to that point, I'll come back and I'll show you how to place the thumb stitches on waist yarn and rejoin in the round. Now I have my eight thumb stitches, so I'm going to place these on waist yarn. So for my waist yarn, I'm just going to use a piece of my contrasting color here. Don't need it to be very long, maybe about 12 inches or so is what I have here. Thread it onto the tapestry needle. I'm just going to slip those first eight stitches off of my front knitting needle onto the tapestry needle. Thread them onto the yarn. Now I can take off my tapestry needle and I just leave that yarn hanging off to the side. Now when I look at my knitting needles, I'm going to have 9 stitches on the front, 10 stitches on the back, or 19 stitches total because I lost one of them for the thumb. So first up, I need to get that stitch back again. So I'm going to pull my back knitting needle over towards the right. So now I need to cast on one stitch. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my working yarn and I'm going to go below my front knitting needle. Then I'm going to wrap it up back behind my front knitting needle down to the bottom again. So I essentially just twisted it around that front knitting needle. Hold that working yarn over to the left and now I'm going to slip that stitch onto the knitting needle that I'm working with. Now when I slip it, I want to make sure I move my working yarn back to the back of my work again so that I can begin knitting and I won't end up with a yarn over. So I cast on one stitch and now I'm going to continue knitting across the rest of this round. And I'm actually going to knit for a total of seven rounds. This counts as the first one. So once I knit for a total of seven rounds, then I'm going to begin the decreases up at the top. So I'll come back and I'll show you those decreases. Now I'm ready to work the decreases at the top of the mitten. And the way the decreases work is each round, we're going to decrease a total of four stitches. So first, the first two stitches are going to get worked together. Then the last two stitches on the first half of the round. Then when we turn our work, the first two stitches and the last two stitches. So starting off, we're going to work a slip slip knit. So a slip slip knit, I slip my first stitch as if I'm knitting it from the left to right knitting needle. Then I'm going to slip my next stitch from the left to right knitting needle as if I'm knitting it. Now I'm going to take my left knitting needle point into the front base of both of those stitches. So it's like the right knitting needle is going up behind. Wrap my yarn around, pull it through. So a slip slip knit creates a left leaning decrease. Now I'm going to knit until two stitches remain on the first half of my stitches. And now I'm going to work a right leaning decrease, which is a knit two together. So I'm going to take my right knitting needle point into the base of the next two stitches on the left knitting needle, knit wise, wrap my yarn around, pull through. Now for the second half of my stitches, I'm going to repeat that exact same thing. So slip slip knit. Then knit until two stitches remain. Now 
knit two together. Now I'm going to continue working that same decrease round over and over again where I slip slip knit, knit until two stitches remain on the first half, knit two together, repeat on the second half, until I just have two stitches remaining on each knitting needle or four stitches total. Then we'll be ready to cast off those stitches. Now to cast off the four stitches, first I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving a short tail, so only about eight inches or so. Thread my tapestry needle with it. And now, starting with the first stitch I would have worked, so opposite where my working yarn is coming out of, I'm just going to slip those two stitches off of my knitting needle onto my tapestry needle, pull them over so they go on the yarn. And for the final two, I want to keep on going in order, like around the round. So I'm going to pull my knitting needle so they go to the other side. And now, again, going from right to left, I'm going to slide them off the knitting needle onto this waist yarn. Now I don't want there to be too much of like a point up there at the top. So what I do is I thread this yarn kind of just to the side, or kind of in the center of those four stitches, through to the inside of my work. And then I just pull it down a bit, and that creates more of a rounded edge up there at the top. Last up we have the thumb, so I'm gonna place my mitten down on the table so the thumb is going over towards the left. Now to pick up these stitches, I'm going to start with the first four, going from right to left, and I'm just going to pick up each one with one of my knitting needle points. Now that the first four are on there, I'm going to take this knitting needle, pull it towards the left, so that those four stitches end up on my opposite knitting needle. I'm going to turn my work so the thumb is over on the right side now. And again, going from right to left, I'm going to take my free knitting needle point and pick up these four. Now that I have all the stitches on my knitting needle, I can take out my waist yarn. Now that I've taken my waist yarn out, again, I'm going to turn my work so my thumb is over on the left and my knitting needle points are going over towards the right. And I need to rejoin some yarn, so I'm going to take about 8 inches and thread it to the inside of my work, so I'm going to go right into the center of that thumb, pull the working yarn through. Now I'm going to continue working round after round for a total of 4 rounds. So I don't cast on any stitches or worry about closing up any holes that form in this inner corner here mainly because this isn't a mitten that's going to be worn. So as long as you don't notice it, generally speaking, I think it looks fine. So there is actually a hole in that inner corner, but I actually don't think you notice it all from the front of the mitten. If you wanted to, you could take the yarn tail that we just combined on or added on and use that to tighten up one of those ends there. Now I'm just going to keep on knitting round after round for a total of four rounds. I've worked up for those rounds, and now I'm going to decrease. So to decrease for the thumb, I'm just going to work knit two together a total of four times. So we're going to go from eight stitches down to four. So two knit two together is on the first half of my work, and then two on the opposite side as well. And now I'm going to cut my work and bind off the same way I did up here at the top of the mitten. And then again, so it doesn't end up having a little point to it, I thread that yarn tail right down the center of the thumb and pull it to the inside.
Now that I finished the main portion of the mitten, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna turn my mitten inside out and weave in all of these ends, except for that long tail that we started the cast on with. So that one I'm gonna keep long. That way I have something to hang this ornament from. Every other one though, I'm gonna go ahead and weave in real quick. Now last up, if you wanna create a cute little chain to be able to hang it from, what I do is I use a crochet hook to create that look. So I'm gonna hold the mitten with the thumb kind of pointed towards myself, and I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I'm gonna go into one of the stitches that's from that cast on edge right next to where that working yarn or that yarn tail is coming out of. So again, just to show it more zoomed in, this is the outside or the right side of my work. I'm just going right to the side of where that yarn tail is coming out of. So how I crochet a chain is I pull the yarn tight with my left hand, and now I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I'm gonna loop it behind that yarn tail. I'm gonna pull the yarn tail through the existing stitch that was on my crochet hook. And now there's a new stitch on my crochet hook. And now I'm gonna repeat that again. So I'm gonna take the crochet hook behind, grab onto that yarn tail, pull it through the existing stitch, and I just keep on pulling the new strand of yarn through the existing loop. Sometimes I have to make the loop a little bit looser too to make it a little bit easier. And I keep on doing this, it's probably about I'd say seven inches for how long I like my loop. But as you're going along, you can always just fold it over and see how long of a little chain loop you've created. Okay, so I like that length right there. So when I'm all done, I'm gonna take the crochet hook, pull the loop a little bit larger, and now I'm gonna thread the yarn through the remaining loop. I'm gonna cut this yarn tail a little bit shorter too, just leaving about eight inches to weave in. And using my tapestry needle, I'm gonna thread that yarn tail onto my tapestry needle, loop this around, and go to the inside of my little mitten Pick a few of the stitches here to go under. And now it's secured in place. So I just need to tie a little knot first. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I usually tie a double knot. And then I weave in this end. And that's perfect. So that is how I create one of these mitten ornaments. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my future videos. I'll see you next time.